Good day. Welcome to King Will Knows Everything. Today we're going to take a look at part one of our webmen on the Asus Tinkerboard. And this is basically just a general overview. So kind of what we're going to do is we're going to just kind of take a look at the website, uh, see what kind of features it has, and what it does. So we're going to go to webmen.com. And you kind of see here, uh, kind of explains what is webmen. And basically what Webmin is, it allows you to administer your PC uh, remotely. It's mostly for server type things. So um, you know, some of the features um, you kind of see you can do uh, Apache web server, backup configs, uh, just makes administrative things much easier. But it'll help you install things. Um, say you want uh, Apache on there, you go in the Apache plugin click on it and I'll install it and just the, the management and configuration is about 10 times easier than going through the command line uh, type admin stuff uh, they just kind of put some like graphical things and uh, little parts you can fill in then it runs all the commands in the background it does some other ne nice things um, you can kind of see here uh, like the ECP server uh, uh, HTTP tunnel you can do uh, Java file managers L uh, LDAP you can do NFS. You can set up your VPN. A uh, lot of different, a lot of different features. Like I said, this is mostly just for server things, but there are some non-server things in here. Um, as we go down a little farther, you can kind of see configure you your partitions. So if you want to set up disks, really easy. Uh, the, the partition manager works really well here. Uh, do SSH. You can configure SSH. Uh, your server Samba uh, makes Samba super easy to configure. Uh, you can do scheduling cron jobs. I like that a lot. It makes uh, scheduling stuff like that. Basically, you pick what you want to do. You can put in the command line, and it automatically, you know, you pick the, the times you want things to run. Works really well. Um, spam assassin. Uh, you can set up your uh, your postfix, uh, mail server, uh, NTP. All those things. Th that's what this is going to get you. So your system time. Uh, uploads and downloads you can do a lot of webmin configuration stuff and what we're gonna do after we go through here we're gonna kind of show you kind of what it looks like but you kind of get the idea lots of neat stuff in here and it's free that's the best part and here we can kind of see um, which Linux is uh, it's basically supported under like I said uh, the tinker board is, is Debian so I mean as long as it's Debian shows up in there and it is it's easy to install and so you get a good idea. There's quite a few supported. You got uh, some Unix, uh, HPUX, uh, AIX, uh, all the, the, the big Linux is Oracle. Modules, that's kind of what we were looking, looking at. But now let's download it. So let's click on the Debian. Uh, the app get and the Synaptic doesn't have this in it, so you have to download and install it separately. But you can see it's pretty simple. Click on it and download. We're on Windows, so we're just going to download on Windows. And put it on a thumb drive and copy it over. And to access Webmin, uh, we're not going to do the install. We'll just show you how to install it in part two. But basically, uh, you put your host name, HTTPS, colon, slash, slash, host name, colon, 10,000. So it uses port 10,000. So you put, say, uh, Asus Tinkerboard, colon, 10,000. And you have to make sure it's uh, uh, HTTPS, and that'll get you to its website. And kind of see what Windows knows. I don't have a certificate on here, but we could fix that. But for now, we're just going to say, go ahead. And then you get the little webmin login. And uh, the default is Lenaro. And save with the password. You can see where I logged in, so it knows me. I haven't changed my password yet, but that's B. And you see it's it'll it'll kind of load up here uh, it's still thinking and you kind of get like a little uh, uh some little uh, dashboards here showing like you know how much memory is available that kind of stuff. so because it gives us kind of some uh, uh, graphical uh, views of some of the things anyway while it's doing that let's click on webmin you can see some of the uh the webmin type things for uh, the application, you can back up config files, change language, you know, it's mostly webmin uh, type stuff. You can change the themes, you know, that, that's what this part basically is. 
and it's pretty simple. And you'll see as you go through this, most of it's this, this kind of interface. And the userman config, so if you want to change your config. And if you look at right below where my cursor is, you can see install userman. So if you click on that, that'll install it for you. So that's one of the nice things and features about this. If you're, it's missing some package, you click on that and it installs it and away, away you go. So now let's go to system. You can see system is where a lot of the features are at. Uh, you can see um, <clears throat> some backup stuff, change passwords. Uh, disk quotas. You can see your change passwords. You pick on your the user you want to change your password on, and let you change your password. So it makes the administration super simple. So let's say Lenaro, I want to change the password. Put the, the new password twice, and apply it, and away you go. So no command line, nothing. And it just it doesn't matter. So disk and network file systems. So you kind of see um, uh, the percentage used and what's in use and that kind of stuff and so that's kind of neat uh, file system backups uh, log file rotation let's scroll down a little bit more you can see running processes scheduled commands uh, that command is not found in your system so you'd have to install at uh, scheduled cron jobs Here's basically um, um, Synaptic get, get kind of thing. So this will what, what's neat about this? It goes out and it looks every now and then. You can schedule it. It'll say, hey, here's some uh, like you see here was a new version of uh, whatever that is. But it'll say, hey, all these these packages are, are there's new versions out there. Do you want to update them? So it makes the the, the admin stuff kind of like a Windows update type thing. So and you now if you want to install one manually. You, th this is how, uh, say something's not an apt-get or a synaptic, you can download, say, Firefox, say install, point it to the location, it installs it for you. And here's the users and groups. And it gives some nice information on that. Servers, and this is where you're going to configure all the, like, uh, post fix and uh, your website, uh, uh, actor directory, that kind of thing. You can see DHCP server. I'm not running that. And let's see what else we got here. Uh, you want the MySQL database, you can do that. Uh, Postfix, you want your mail server. There's the Samba. Probably want that at some point. You can see it down below, it has some nice little uh, icons. So you click on the icon, tell it what you want to do. And uh, just makes admin so much easier. And what's nice about doing stuff like this, I mean, a lot of people like doing the command line stuff. But making mistakes is a lot less going to, you know, a lot less likely if you use an uh, admin tool like this. So that's kind of nice. So anyway, you get kind of get the idea about Samba. If we go back, let's see, we got miscellaneous options, uh, file size, or file share. So to make a file share, uh, you know, doesn't get any easier than this. Click on, um, uh, you know. The file or the folder you want to make and say share it and give permissions or not permissions and just super easy. And let's see, let's go down a little bit more. There's your SSH. You want to do that if you want to, you know, remotely log in with the command line. Easy to set up, same same icon kind of theme there. The authenticator. And you, that's where you're going to set in the login and authentication options. So that's kind of cool. See here I have it installed and configured. System and server status. So if you want some information on uh, the services that are running, see I don't have a whole lot of services right now running, but if there were, you can you can click on like say Samba and click on it and configure it. So it's kind of new. It'll show you the status. Um, New bandwidth monitoring that works really well. Here's the Linux firewall. Firewall, if you want to configure the firewall, makes that uh, uh, pretty easy to do. Let's go down again. And hardware. This is where you're going to configure, you know, um, 
you see iSCSI stuff. We're not going to have any of that on here because it's a pretty simple device. But a printer administration, so if you want to share out printers, partitions, configuring partitions, those, those kind of things. You see we just have the two, the, the Linux one and the little boot one. On the uh, SD card. So that's kind of nice. You can see it's a 32 gig SD card. And there's the printer administration system time. So if you want to do NTP, you can figure NTP. Give it a second. Looks like it's reading it. And there you go. System time. And this, uh, the, my tinker board has a uh, real time clock on it. So I, I configured that. So that works out really well. And the cluster, if you want to do a cluster, you know, do an Asus Tinkerboard cluster, you can do it on there. Since we have one Asus Tinkerboard, we're not going to do that. But you can see a lot, of, a lot of neat features for that. You can do like a refresh modules at the t above that, if you want to refresh everything. And these here are like some favorites, terminal, those kind of things. Theme configurator just gives you little shortcuts at the bottom. Really nice little uh, application, and you can't really beat the, the price of free. But here you go. Anyway, here's the uh, the main dashboard. I finally loaded. You can see, um, you know, some memory, uh, uh, CPU, that kind of thing. So that's kind of nice, and it gives you some information about your. There you go. Operating system Debian Linux nine. So that's kind of what I detected it as. Uh, themes, system uptime. So that's kind of cool to get this information just at a glance. You can see it's been up one day, three hours. If we refresh that. And another thing you see there's like a little uh, bell right at the right hand side that gives you like alerts. So if there's like new packages available, something like that, then like there'll be a little alert will show up in your in your web browser. You kind of get the idea. Um, kind of what this does. Like I said, it's mainly admin stuff but you know there are some other things that they might find useful if you're not, not doing a lot of administrative stuff you know just being able to you know change passwords those kind of things uh, just makes it so much easier but uh, and you can add more features here you can add more plugins so say you want uh, like Nagios or something something like that you can put a plugin for that um, you know just uh, it's really really customizable and just a really, really nice, nice application for for free, and I, I've used it for quite a while on uh, uh, Red Hat and uh, uh, some other things. But you know, for for this, it's really, really just uh, just fantastic. I'm gonna take a couple more looks here and see uh, boot up and shut down, and this lets you kind of define what you want to run on startup, what you want to run on shutdown, and it's. Looking and loading, there you go. So you can kind of see some of the, 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 um, the processes that start at boot up. If you want to stop it, stop some process at boot up, you can stop it right here. So it just makes instead of editing a bunch of files, it just makes it a lot easier. Or if you want to add it, if you want to add something in, say you want some some job to run at you know at, at boot up, you can set that in here. So and it kind of gives you the status on the side there. That's 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 a nice little uh, feature too. You see SSH over there, and there's some little status at the bottom: start, stop, and you can do restart a restart a service. So you click on it, and say uh, stop or restart. You can restart something that's getting funky. Like I said, it makes it super easy. Let's uncheck that because I don't want to uh, mess with that fellow. But anyway, uh, that's basically the kind of the intro to Webmin. Um, well, in part two, we'll do an install. In part three, we'll get in and use it a little bit. So until next time, have a great day.